arts. We're talking about arts. 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 Okay. Yeah. What is our problem is in why art? You're where you are. This is why I'm where I am. Yes. So the trade winds have taken you somewhere, and you're talking about art, and that's why we're talking about it because it's important. And also, the artists are starting to do some interesting things. So we wanted to discuss that <laughs> as a follow-on from our last stream. Mm. Uh, oh, we are going to go into edgy waters again, are we? Off the I'll edge of the amazing. world. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, you're quite literally in edgy waters right now. <laughs> well, there has been, I, you know, my, my reputation from the other side of the ocean followed me a bit. So there's, there's been a little edginess here. Con uh, concerns with what kind of positions I hold on things like, um, well, I've been called a conspiracy theorist, but that, that, that you know, that, that, that just means I think people talk. That's just a tinfoil crown yeah, of honor. Yeah, that's a tinfoil crown of honor, right? You know, and, and whether, whether I, I rally, I rouse up arguments among medievalists, well, we knew I did that. <laughs> but maybe, so yeah. I, shall, I say, shall I say the, the edgiest thing I think I've actually said in the, uh, in the professional conversations here? Go for it. Well, one of the papers, one of the excellent papers was about Christian, uh, whether there could be such a thing as a Christian poetics. And mm -hmm. you will like this because he was talking about George Steiner. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know you, you sometimes think about Steiner and his work with art and the, 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 the big problem of whether there's such a thing as a real presence. Oh, uh, you mean Rudolf. Oh, maybe I was confusing Steiner's. Ha ha. Okay. I confuse Steiners. There's different Steiners. There's different Steiners. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, no. Okay. So these are different Steiners. I mean, that's an important information, right? So the Rudolphs, okay. I was confusing them completely. The Rudolf Steiner who started the schools and, and, and is yes. worried about art, right? So, okay. I just conflated the two of those. Yes. yes. Um, uh, George Steiner um, is famous for a book he wrote on real presences and sort of thinking about what it means I'm, I'm getting some of this from the talk that we heard, what it means to have um, a, a sense of the real presence. And as Catholics or Christians, we Christian, whatever we are, but wherever you and I are, we need a, we need a term for it. Catholics, apostolic, right? Um, that we, that the real presence is the Eucharist and the, the presence of God in the consecrated host, right? So the, the, the liturgy, is a experience of the real presence. Um, but Steiner, this Steiner, yes. forget about George, uh, Rudolf Steiner, George Steiner was Jewish. <laughs> um, and mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that came out in the conversation yesterday was the degree to which in, in Jewish understanding, the presence is something that comes out in the conversation around a text. I mean, and, and specifically, it's like Talmudic, Talmudic yeah. study, when they're talking about the, the, you know, the teachings, as we learned from Ari, that you know, they're, they're talking about the teachings. In that conversation arises the the Shekinah, the the presence of of the Lord, um, and and Steiner, George Steiner, in his literary theory, as one of the commentators suggested yesterday, seems to be he's not really necessarily speaking as a Christian, although Christians will hear it as such because we think in terms of the real presence, we think in terms of the presence of Christ in the in the Eucharist. And so if we hear that word real or the phrase real presence, well, oh, he's talking about the Eucharist and he may not be. <laughs> and, and this, and this, this sort yeah. of came out of in the, in the discussion of like whether or not, um, Steiner one, he, I think he, he, he never technically said he converted, right? So whatever happened in his heart, we, or, or with God, we don't know, but that he never described himself as Christian. And um, his description of the present seems to fit more with this. It's the, it's the, it's, I've, I've, I've heard lectures on, on the way that the um, Jewish experience is about this conversation around the text, right? It's, it's a very beautiful way of thinking, but it's not the same as our liturgical understanding. And, mm -hmm. and so this was set up in the, in the, in the papers, whether or not there could be such a thing as a Christian poetics. And I, of course, because this is <laughs> my holy fool role, I hope, um, academically speaking. So, well, as far as I'm concerned, poetics is only Christian, mm -hmm. uh, shock, horror, uh, because it's about making, right? Because poesis is actually making 
And if we're doing poetry, which I would say in, in this context is the larger scale of art, right? It's like we talk about art as an, a craft or a making or a skill or a, we, that's one of the things we're trying to puzzle out tonight, right? Today, whatever it is. I think I'm at tonight and I got the sun shining on me. It's very hard to switch time zones. Um, Welcome to my yes. life. <laughs> no, I, the thing is, I don't know what time zone I'm in. I'm used to streaming at night, so I think I'm at night, and I've got the sun above me, and so it's clearly daytime. Um, yeah, that, you've entered the primordial oblivion now. I, I don't. I, it's like the stream. The stream time is all time. <laughs> yes, so we're definitely in River Run by now, right? Um, that that poesis in Greek is making, and so you know that that art. I, and then, of course, you get the problem of Aristotle wrote the poetics and stuff. So clearly, the Greeks have some idea of whatever, right? But the 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 way the way in which we're thinking about, um, you know, the the human creativity and making and such is theologically, you know, explained through Christianity that that God makes us and we and and enters into the world as a human being but as a great act of making and and, and sub creation and, and remaking and so forth and so the christian poetics is is almost a you know a tautology christianity is about making mm. and i i think the other way works too but <laughs> then, you, then you truly end up in trouble because you know if if we're going to make claims as christians and say art is you know, we okay. One, we know we under we have been shown the truth that it's been revealed to us through Christ that this is the truth of the reality of reality. It's like there's not alternate realities and other choices. And we also, of course, say if if indeed Aristotle is able to write about poetics, he um, is tapping into that truth, that reality, which is prefigured, prophesied in the Old Testament, and therefore maybe in also other literatures. But fulfilled in the Gospels, fulfilled in the Incarnation. Mm. Where, where, where it's realized. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, why is this so scandalous? Um, well, I, I mean, one, because Christians are, 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 are little kitties. <laughs> um and for curious reasons we don't want to just say this is the truth we've gotten we've mm. got and and of course i mean one of the things now now i've got my steiners confused and i'm pretty sure i heard about this i mean that i uh, i think he's oh dear now i've not now i'm not sure who i heard about yesterday most of the con i'll give you another hint most of the conversations in portuguese <laughs> And um, in insofar as I had, had had you know colleagues translating for me, I, I understood some of it in better precision than than, than other parts of it. Um, I think yes, I, it's that Steiner is is like he's talking about the Holocaust in the period in which nobody will, and he's talking about yeah. the old criticism of of literature in a period in which everyone's talking about the new criticism. I mean, he was he was a bit of a a border a border like us borderers right you live on the border and you bring up the things that, that nobody wants. you know it's like i you know clearly i live on borders here i am on the border of, of the world <laughs> and yes. uh you know and and i i you know i what i said in my talk too that this is in, in christianity is this um mode of well not just juxtapositions but uh, or, and maybe hybridity, but it's, I was talking about comics. And so Christian art is fundamentally both about the word and the image. It's about text and I guess icon, um, it's heaven and earth, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that it's all of these Christians. We live on the border. We, we absolutely live on the, and in my talk too, I was talking about the Codex Amiatinus, which has this amazing re rendering in the book in book form of the temple veil because there's this page in the book that's purple that you basically have to turn to get inside the book and the next image in the book is uh, an image of the tabernacle it's it's an image of the wilderness the, the wilderness tabernacle and you turn this purple page which is, means you like enter through the veil into the tabernacle mm -hmm. and of course it's scandalous it's absolutely scandalous for christians to claim this from from a um, rabbinic perspective, 
that we yes. enter into our Christ, you know, Christ is our great high priest that, you know, entered into the world from the Holy of Holies and then carried the sacrifice back through the Holy of Holies and the temple veil is rent, but that we are priests, you know, the, the, the great, he's our great high priest and we are called to be priests and kings. We're called to serve. And I guess that therefore, I, I'd never thought of this before. We're, we're meant to be constantly passing back and forth from the heavenly to the earthly to live on that border. We're border people. We're wilderness border people. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to own that. <laughs> and, and I, you know, maybe, maybe that scares people that they like, don't like living on the borders, on the edges in the wilderness and the passing between mm. the heaven, the, you know, the heavenly and the earthly, the text and the image people, people much prefer being in tight, uh, not tidy categories, but just, um, It's being on the border feels dangerous, I think. It is. Because it's hard to measure the, uh, when you're when you've gone to the frontier, there's no way of measuring. Hmm. Right? right? Because that, that that's the idea. You you hit the frontier, uh, there's no longer any map. It's uh it's beyond something that's measurable. Um, similar to when people are leaving their leaving their land of origin and entering the ocean and going off into the high seas, that kind of experience where uh, artists are doing this as well. So this mm. makes sense to me that Christianity is an inherently poetic. It is poetic because good artists should be going to the border of human experience and puncturing it and then coming back into it and bringing whatever they can with them to, to show everybody something that they haven't seen before. And when we were talking about the artist last week, remember when Ye's like he's made his White Lives Matter shirt that's caused so much controversy and we're, you were explaining, you know, this, uh, this, um, as, uh, this assortment of elements in that t-shirt that's been lost on everybody because it's text and image and it's back and front and it's the whole uh uh the way that the entire thing's been curated and put together um that's text and image yeah it makes sense it makes sense that definitely no i we had, didn't talk about that last week but yes it back and front and we talked about how people only ever yeah. looked at the back and they didn't yeah. look at the front yeah. and they didn't talk about the juxtaposition of the, the images and the languages and the, yeah. 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 So that was, so that, was a, that, that, that was a one beautiful example of what we're doing. We're looking, we're looking towards, towards the Holy of Holies. The world sees the back of mm. us and has a completely different impression of what's going on at the front. Yes, exactly. And everybody, yeah. everybody obsessed on the back of the shirts. Yeah. And, and well, I mean, and what's interesting is, and that was the only image that got like circulated massively, although there were plenty of images of the, of the front too. I, so you were saying, why do people find this threatening? Maybe it's because so often they're only seeing one side of things, right? That that Christianity requires us to think multidimensionally. 